It's Ron Vesky and we in the Vettatini, the roof off like Houdini. Hey, I think the haters want to beat me. We getting green like zucchini, baby. This is Vet Talk episode four. Y'all know we about to skull. Hey, and please don't try me. I got OVO, baby. <laughs> I got OVO with me today, baby. But I, before we even get to the video, I want to say huge shout out to everybody who asks questions. We're going to have a Q&A today. And I appreciate every last one of you that's tuning to the channel. I appreciate all the love and support. And I also appreciate the haters. We're going to keep on skating. We're going to keep on being great. And we're going to keep on getting this cake in, baby. But again, this is the Vet Talk episode four. And y'all know it's time to skull. Let's go. comes from Chandra she said now that you have the app drop-off do you like it the best it seems like you make the most money with that the fastest Sean what's going on so honestly drop-off app is my favorite app by far it definitely seems like we make the most money the fastest and it's a smooth drive we actually got one tonight too so we're gonna record that so if you if, make sure you stay tuned for that video because we're gonna drop that video and I'm gonna explain to you guys why I quit my job and when I quit my job so I'm gonna talk about that tonight but drop off is definitely my favorite app and i definitely recommend you guys sign up if you aren't if you aren't signed up the link is in the no the link is i'm gonna put the link in this video baby now the link is gonna help you guys get into drop off knock your socks off but you do have to put in your own work everybody wants somebody to do i'm not doing the work for you baby all i can do is send the word to drop off let them know that you're interested in it and uh to look out for your name in the state i'll send them the name the state you're in and your email address so when they look in there they can see you and they can say hey this 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 ddk sent them so we might as well be go ahead and sign them up right now baby but i appreciate your question and i definitely love drop off i ain't gonna lie i was just telling my business partner earlier today just like a few hours ago that drop off is by far my favorite app and if we could do that every single day i would definitely do i would do deliver that in the morning and i would do drop off at night if i if, if look if the world was perfect i can have how i want to have it because those are the seem to be the easiest apps and you deal with the least amount of problems. Question number two comes from Walton Boys. And they ask, what happened with DoorDash? So, what's going on with the DoorDash? I ask, absolutely, I have no clue what's going on with DoorDash. But I do know this, baby. In our area now, you cannot schedule on the same day. You can't just go in there and say, today is Tuesday. What's today? Monday or Tuesday? Today is Tuesday. You can't go in there and schedule for Tuesday right now. You cannot do that. You have to schedule a week in advance. And then, a lot of times when you try to schedule... Guess what? They only have blocks open from like 5 to 9 p.m., baby. And a lot of times we can't do those things. We got a lot of other stuff going on. And not to mention, when you get in there sometimes, we'll be riding around the beginning. We go do an order. And next thing you know, DoorDash will pause you for that, that 10 minute pause, not the 30 minute pause, the 10 minute pause, and you don't even know, and they kick you out. That's happened to us multiple times. Also, it's been glitching and stopping in the middle of the uh, order. Like, one time we went to go pick up this McDonald's order. We drive it, we about to go drive to drop it off, and guess what? We can't get no directions from GPS. So we don't know where to go. We don't know the address. So we can't put it in a Google. So like we just stuff. We got to start the phone over and all that stuff. Hey, Tony, you need to get it together, baby. You got all that chain. You need to get that app together, baby. But that's what's been going on with DoorDash. And honestly, I, I, I still do like to do DoorDash, but it's been hard for us to get orders and hard for us to get in the app, man. So it's like, we got to go where the money at, baby. We ain't got time to be keep on playing no games. We trying to do our thing and change lanes. Okay, question number three comes from Scorpio Cara. And they ask, how old are you and what is your zodiac sign? Cara, what's going on? She she usually the first one to comment on every single video. She always say first on every single video. Usually. Sometimes, you know, sometimes she has times, but most of the time, she's usually a first. Um, I am 32. I'm big 32 gang, baby. Big 32 gang, and I am an Aquarius. I Comment below and let me, Cara, since you're watching this video right now, I'm sure you're watching this video, let me know what that whole Zodiac stuff means, because I don't know nothing about it, baby. I be seeing people saying that, you know, I be seeing a lot, even, even mostly women, too. They be saying, you know, we dis, we dis, uh, signs, so this means this. I don't know nothing about it, baby. I don't know much about it, but I do notice that, uh, a lot of Aquarius that I run into, we seem to get along better. I, that just, I kind of think that we kind of think alike a little bit. I think that we the best Zodiac signs, even though I don't know what it means, you know, because usually, if all the questions that I know, we all kind of think alike for the most part. Okay, and your next. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Look at this. Look, look. He moving the boat. I know I'm supposed to be paying attention to y'all, but look, I ain't never seen this in real time. 
Dang. What if that joint fall? Just don't drive under it. No, I definitely ain't driving under that joint. We gonna die for sure. It ain't even the question. That's crazy. I ain't gonna lie. I wouldn't want to do a job like that because if some, if any little tweak mess up, any little thing, it's over with, baby. Everybody probably putting their boats up because it's, you know, that snow about to start coming before we know it. But we don't always question number, what's number, what number? I mean, I think question, number, question number four. Question number four, we about to go. It comes from Jessica. And she says, how many siblings do you have and who's your favorite? This is my sister for you. For, for, for those of you who don't know, this is my sister asking this question. I have six siblings. I'm the oldest. And my favorite sibling is Phoenix. Phoenix and <laughs> Phoenix. This is why Phoenix is my favorite sibling. My favorite, my favorite sibling is Phoenix because he's the only other boy and he's the youngest. So I'm the oldest. It's only two boys, it's only me and him. So I'm the oldest and he's the youngest. So Phoenix, man, Phoenix, my God, man, Phoenix. That's that's my my favorite sibling. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> she definitely tried to trick you with that one, didn't she? Yeah, she tried to try to bamboozle me. Try to put me banana in the tailpipe. Okay, the next question, once again, comes from Jessica, and she says, what is one piece of advice that you would tell your younger self? Back to the old me. Three of them! Shout out to Mr. Organic. The younger me, I would told me to start earlier. That's that's the one thing I would have did. I would have started, uh, I would have started investing in real estate and stuff way earlier. That's the only thing I would say. Um, that's the only thing I kind of would change, honestly. I think that everything in life happens for a reason. I think you meet people and all that stuff and everything, and the people that you meet, then you might have a good relationship with, them or it might have ended bad, or whatever the case may be. But I think that everything in life happens for a reason. The only thing I would say is to invest earlier. But a lot of times when I really think about this, guess what? Maybe my mental wasn't there yet. That's what a lot of times, like when I was younger, I used to be bothered about me not being multimillionaire yet. I'm still ain't multimillionaire yet, but it's gonna happen. But I used to get bothered by it a lot because I felt like it wasn't happening fast enough. But now I had to realize that you guys have to be patient and put the work in and it's gonna come when it's supposed to come because your mental is gonna be there. Like if I would've got the millions, if I was young, I probably would've blew it because I ain't know no better. So that's what I would say to my the younger me is to invest earlier. Okay, so from her question, I have a question. So would you have told your younger self to quit your job sooner and grind harder on your own? Because you tell a lot of your subscribers, don't be scared, just try it, what's the worst that's gonna happen? Uh -huh. uh, you could just go get another job. So would you have told your younger self, just quit this job sooner and try it, what's the worst that's gonna happen? Well, that's, you have an extraordinary point. Guess what, I would never work for nobody in the first place. I, I'm just gonna say that. But I see, the thing is, it's like kind of hard for me to say that because I think that everything happened for a reason and it grew me in a certain area. Because if I would never went to my job, been working in my job, I probably, I'm definitely would have quit earlier. But if I would never working in my job, then I probably wouldn't have had time or the, the focus and the, and not the resources, but the, the time and the focus to listen to that rich dad poor dad every single day and that thing grow rich. All that played a part in everything. Cause that changed my whole mindset. Once I started listening to those books every day, then it changed my mindset in the way I thought about things. So if I wasn't working, I probably wouldn't have did that. I probably would, I don't know, you never know. Because this is how I really think about it, right? Everything in life happens for a reason, and if anything, any little small thing was tweaked and it was something different, everything would be different. So nothing would be the same right now. But if you would have quit your job sooner, do you think it possibly would have been better for, would have been different for the better? I think it would have been, I think it would have been different for the better, but also wh how young though. See, all that stuff matters. Like the age of what it, the age that I would have quit. Like it depends on what age I was. But think about this though, right? So if I would have quit if I was 25, I would never been there to buy the property because I wouldn't have had no W two income. But were you thinking about quitting at that time, or were you thinking about quitting more along the lines of at your last job when you finally did quit? Like I how never, long were you waiting? You know, saying, you know, just let me quit, let me quit before you actually quit. I never really wanted to work for nobody. So it was always a thing that I had. I never really wanted to work for nobody. I also feel like that my, my last job was, not the last job, but the one before that, it was a little bit easier for me because it was like, I really wasn't managed by nobody. I just had to go deliver exercise equipment and then drop it off. That's all I really had to do. But I did used to get into my supervisor. I used to, I have, I'm gonna tell you this. Let me tell you, I'm gonna keep it G real with you, cuz. I'm gonna keep it G real with y'all, cuz. I have an issue, as bad as this may sound, I think it's because my dad was around when I was a kid. I have a thing about men telling me what to do. I just, I don't know what it is about it, but I don't like it. It's not, it's not that I have a problem, it's all about how you present it to me. 
I will listen to a woman before I listen to a man any day. I don't know why. It's just a thing. Comment below. Let me know if you feel the same way. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. That's just how I feel. I'm gonna keep it real and not keep it still. Okay. The next question comes from Court Dollars, and he says, "I'm just getting into gate work now since I just got my car. Nobody seems to be accepting new drivers at the time." Did you run into any hurdles like this? If so, how did you persevere through? Huge shout out to my guy. He got that 2023 roller. Roller dollar. He get that he out there get that money, baby. So honestly, the way I look at it is everything is gonna happen when it's meant to happen. I know that sometimes we may not look at it like that, but that's just how that's just that's just how really how it is in life to me. Um I just keep on signing up for more and more apps. That's another reason why I do so many different apps. I don't want to try to lock myself into one app because if something happened to that app or if something happened and we get, like say we was, for instance, we were doing nothing but Spark. And that's the only app we had. When we got kicked up, what was going to do after that? We had to start from ground zero. So I would recommend that you sign up for every single app that they got. Every single app you see me do or even I even look up some on Google and stuff, and look up those and try to sign up for those because you may have some in your area that we don't have. Everything that I could sign up for, I will sign up for. And there definitely was a waiting period. How long did you wait to get into Spark? Spark, we made like three months each. It wasn't just both of us. She so waited three months, got in, and then I, and a lot of times, um, you got into some apps and I didn't get into them. Like Instacart, I'm not into Instacart, but you didn't in Uber Eats either. And so, how long did you wait for Grubhub? Grubhub ain't never even locked, locked us in, man. And I'm still hitting them up right now. Speaking of Grubhub, Grubhub, go ahead and lock. Let me in now. Let us in now so we can get busy right quick, baby. That's another app that we could just put into the app. I, I try to do every single app that they got. If they got an app, I want to try it out because you never know what you're going to like. So you might as well just try all of them out. And I know it's going to be hard in the beginning with you not being able to get into the apps, but just keep on trying, man. Keep on trying. Keep on grinding. You're going to keep on shining. You're going to keep on climbing to the top. Okay, and then we have um, another question from Jessica. I think possibly a different Jessica. And they say, do you have any kids? No, ma'am, I do not have any kids. I do want to have, it sounds, I know that everybody can't stand, you know, that Nick Cannon having all these kids, man. But I feel like if you had the money, you could you should have as many kids you want to. If I could have 100 kids, I'll have them. But I would have the mean. I would have to have the means, and I would want to have a big, like huge. My, one of my favorite person with their kids, honestly, in my opinion, is Boosie. And my, people want to say, people can say what they want to say about him. They can say this, 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 they can say all that stuff they want to say about him. But what I do know is he got them kids, and he got them kids around, and they be all in his house all the time, and regardless of what he has to deal with with his baby mom, because he says stuff about it, about the baby mom and all that stuff. And his baby mama, us with the S, he still get them kids. And he actually built a house on his property to have their kids have their own areas and their baby mama so he can have them all together. But I love kids. That's I love I love kids and older people. That's just my thing. Those are my two things. I have an issue when people. That's the only time you'll see me get bothered about something. Really, really when it's about a kid or an older person. I really really works my nerves and bother me. So, but yeah, I do love kids. I don't have any kids at the moment, but eventually maybe one day I've had fifty of them or something. I gotta get a whole lot of money though. A whole lot of money. Okay, her next question is, what do you dislike about your state? The snow. I'm gonna say, snow. I mean, snow. I can't stand that snow. I know, I'm gonna say this. I only want to snow very, I only want to snow on Christmas. Let me say that. Cause that's the, that's, that's I, snow on Christmas. I don't mind snow, but heavy snow, heavy snow, when it's heavily snowing, I can't stand it, man. Cause with the snow, everybody drives slower. Everybody don't want to drive right, and people be tweaking. Some people be driving too fast. They on the highway flying because they got four by four. Next thing you know, you see them over in the ditch. It's just a lot of goes on with the snow. Uh, snowy property taxes. That's it. I don't got no other complaints. Everything else is cool for me. Okay, which rolls into the next question. Do you own your house? Absolutely. We own it all. We, so. Honestly, I don't own a house, just a house. I own it multiple units. I don't, the reason why I don't, I haven't purchased a house yet is because I feel like I need to be making enough money for my other properties in order to give me a house. And it's a certain house that I want, it's a certain house that, is, and that, I'm not stopping until I get that one. That's gonna be the one that I want. I'm not just getting any house just because just because I like it. It's a specific one, a specific type I want. And I, it's, I'm gonna have to get it built because they don't have any around here. Even if, that's even, if the city let allow me to do it, so. Okay, and then they say, what's the most annoying part about buying or selling a house? Um, two things. It's two. It's two different. Two two different. Uh. Okay, so what's the most annoying about buying? Me buying or a client buying? Me. I guess you buy. 
When you buy a house, man, they gonna ask the lender gonna ask you for the same thing three thousand times. They gonna ask you for the same check stuff. Like I only get paid if you if you work in a job, you get paid every two weeks for the most part, or every week whenever you get paid. I only get paid every two weeks. I can't even produce a, a paycheck, a, a pay stuff every week, every three days. Like you already got the last one I got. They wanna ask you a thousand times for the same thing over and over and over. That's the, probably the most annoying thing. And what but, about selling? Selling the house. Mm. Selling the house, I would say more so dealing with the attorney sometimes. Because sometimes attorneys be out of control. I'm, I'm gonna keep it G Roach because sometimes they be out of control. They want you to fix every little thing. They want you to fix the socket and all this. No, no I'm not fixing all that. And I don't believe it's, it's the buyers that um, is really asking for all this stuff. I really believe it's more so the attorney trying to, you know, just tell them to ask for everything and they just get whatever they get type of thing. But that's usually because the attorneys are good and the bad. It's a good, it's a gift and a curse. It's like you want to have an attorney to protect you, but then sometimes they don't protect you. And then it's like, what you going to really do? Like, are you which, what, what? For instance, I just, I sold one of my properties and guess what? Um, like 4300 I need that and I've been waiting for like three months four months they keep on pro prolonging and pushing the back man come on with that money y'all messed up y'all somebody's messed up somewhere but all I know is you the attorney you supposed to handle what you supposed to handle so I need that money so I'm just waiting on that because I need that 43 you know what I'm talking about uh, she said for her and her husband it was the anxiety of waiting for inspections and appraisals which kind of goes into the oh same thing. oh yeah them inspect I the appraisals the appraisals weren't that bad to me no, 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 I'm not. I'm not. Let me take that back. I'm taking that back. First off, we're going we're gonna to talk about the inspectors first. Some of these inspectors are out of control. I'm talking about they are out of control. They do the most. They try to make you. I'm talking about some of them. I don't even know what they be thinking about. Like some of the stuff that don't even make sense. Then you have some appraisers. Some of the appraisers. They trying to appraise something. You don't even live out here, so you don't really know the market. So you just going off some other stuff. You don't really know where you at. You don't know nothing about nothing. And you try to. A lot of times, sometimes they lowball people stuff, and they just be doing people bogus. And it's like you really gotta try to rely on those two people to get the deal done. Because if they mess up, then it's messed up. Now, speaking of quick story, one of my properties I had, I went there to get appraised. But guess what? The it's a two unit. They appraised it as a house, and it was way lower. So guess what I had to do? I had to go through all the trouble of appealing it and doing this and doing. It. And if I wasn't a real estate agent, as a regular person, it's gonna be a, a lot to do because I kind of know the ins and outs and everything already. But as a regular person, that would have been critical because you gotta try to appraise this, you gotta uh, appeal it and all that stuff because you ain't do your job properly. So yeah, it's a headache. It's a headache. And then they, she asked, um, what does DDK stand for? It's DDK. DDK stands for DoorDash King. So every time I'm doing something, guys, I always try to stamp and, ma and make my own name because you don't know what's really going to go. You don't know what's really going to take you up to, to the next level. So I try to, it's all about marketing. So DDK is DoorDash King. MCR is Medical Carrier Rome. I was real to Rome when I was selling the house. Lando Rome, all this different stuff. So that's what DDK stands for, DoorDash King. We made that name up when I first became, when I first did the, my first ever DoorDash. That's when we made it up, DoorDash King. Okay, the next question is from T. Moore. And they say, I like the energy and positivity of your videos. I see you roll with a business partner when doing Amazon Flex. What's the advantage of working together with someone else? T. Moore, we about to score. <laughs> Ball like Jordan. Uh, huge shout out to you for asking this question. Honestly, having a partner, I know that some people look, y'all gotta spend the money on like, don't look at it like that, man. Teamwork make the dream work. Together, each achieve more. And with the teamwork on door, is that a thing? Oh, it's a Porsche. I thought that, I thought that they're yours, baby. But. Honestly, Amazon Flex, Flex, Flex is probably the app that I recommended everybody use a partner with on the most out of any other app, baby, because it works out so well, especially if you gotta go downtown Chicago or downtown wherever you gotta go. Because she could be in the car and I can go do the order. And guess what? If I had to park the car and do it myself, guess what? I might get a ticket. Some people get tickets, the police be driving around and all that stuff. And it's just way easier because we this is how we do it. I'm gonna break it down to you right quick. Right, boom. She had a package already right there. So say we so number one is always the warehouse. So number two, number two gonna be have right there. She gonna set everything up. I'm going to return the cart to the warehouse. She gonna have every she gonna situate everything so we can know when we gotta she gotta get the package, get it, get it right there. I'm gonna come get it, hit it with the scan ski, walk it to the door. While I'm walking into the door, talking to y'all, guess what? She gonna have package number three right here. Bam. When I get back in the car, the package gonna be right there. 
She already got everything in the GPS. She already got everything situated. So all I gotta do is come in the car, put the package, turn the camera on, we drive. We get to the house, she turn the camera off, get the next package, I go to the door, drop the package off. When I come back in the car, the next package is right there. So it's like a system. Like that's how we got it, it's a system. And it works out greatly for both of us because we just moving and grooving and getting this money and you know it's soothing. Okay, and the, this question's from, the last question on here is from PAB702. And they say, I love your videos, Jerome. Your energy is all the way up. You inspire me to grind hard and get that bag. So my question for you is, who were some of you, the first rappers you listened to and why did you like them? That's a good question. Huge shout out to you for asking that question. Guess what? Y'all know what I grew up on? See, y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. A lot of people maybe grew up on R&B. My mom always loved rap. She used to rap back in the days. That's some, a lot of y'all may not know that. She used to rap back in the day. But the person I grew up on, <coughs> comment below and let me know who that is. You should know. If you listen to rap, you should know that. I'm going to tell y'all anyway. That mad that we know limit soldiers. I thought I told you we know limit. That's probably when I used to hear that. When I used to go to the bar sometimes and they play that no limit, it gets me every time. You're gonna see my mm, 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 mm. that no limit, baby. That's that's what I grew up on. Like no limit. Um really no limit. Honestly, there's no limit, really, really. My mom used to love, she loved mystical. No limit is what we grew up on. Uh we had some ludicrous that's roll. Roll out. We had some of that ludicrous and all that stuff. Um, she listens to some slow stuff. She she loved Peter Pablo too. Peter Pablo was going crazy. Y'all don't know. Y'all sleep though. Y'all sleep. Y'all think about that North scale? Like that. No, he had way raw stuff in that. Um, Peter Pablo. She's just that slow. That Lauren Hill. So that that Lauren Hill. She listens to some of that Lauren Hill. So that's some of the stuff we grew up listening to when I was growing up. My mom loved rap, so we really didn't listen to R&B like that. Didn't she like 50 Cent too? Oh yeah, 50 Cent, she loved that 50 Cent. They give her that time. Oh, her favorite song, one of her, she got some, a couple favorite songs. Her favorite, one of her favorite songs of all time is that, every day I'm hustling, every day I'm hustling, every cross, every day I'm hustling. That's one of her favorite songs of all time. That, and, um, um, the L Cool J, that I'm bad. That's, that's her, that's, that, those are probably her two top favorite songs of all time. Um, and then she just said that, or they just said, I want to say hello to your business partner and thanks for all she does behind the scenes. We appreciate you. So thank you for that. You're welcome. She does. She does way more than y'all think she does. Y'all just see me. It's like, it's like teamwork makes the dream work. Y'all just see me. Everybody got to play their role. This is, I want to say this before we go, right? Everybody got to play their role. See, I don't mind. It's all about playing your role. If she was the one doing the YouTube channel, I'd do the behind the scenes stuff. It really doesn't matter to me what I do. As long as we get paid, that's it. So Jordan had to have a Scotty Pimpin. But I'm Scotty Pimpin. Jordan still would have been Jordan, but he needed Scotty Pimpin and uh and Dennis Rob and all that stuff. Everybody gotta play their position, and that's how everybody can win. Everybody just play your role. A lot of times in these communities and everything, everybody wanna be the man. But just play your role. If Steve, if somebody become if, if, that I know become a multi-billionaire and they need somebody to drive them around in limousines, guess what I'm gonna be doing? Riding them right around, getting their luggage together. See, I don't care about none of that. As long as we all getting paid and we playing our position, we're going to win, baby. So everybody don't need to be the star. Everybody don't need to be on the camera. Everybody just need to play their position, and you're gonna win, and you're gonna get them dividends. Make sure you guys lock in tomorrow because we getting back. Well, make sure we gonna get busy tonight, baby. We gonna do that drop off, about to knock their socks off, and I'm gonna tell you guys why I quit my job and all that stuff. I got a whole little story time for you, baby. Comment below and let me know if you guys like these type of videos. Also, this is I don't know if it's the last Rick Talk video, but we gotta do as much vet talks as we can. So you guys wanna make sure that you we gonna start another one right now. So you guys wanna make sure that you answer, uh, uh, put your put your question in the comment section in the community page. We're gonna try to do Vet Talk episode number five. We trying to stay alive, we trying to drive and get these dividends because guess what? It's gonna start snowing, baby. And once it starts snowing, I'm thinking about maybe doing a podcast. Comment below and let me know what you guys think about that. I don't know, baby. But I appreciate every last one of you. I appreciate all of you for rocking with the channel and rocking with everything I got going on. We trying to get it on, baby. And I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna keep it G real because what do you guys think about, we all, we coming up on our year mark. October 24th will be one year of dropping a video every single day. Do you guys think we should make a transition? If so, what should it be? Should we do something else? Should we switch it up? Should we stop doing gear work? Should we do something else? Comment below and let me know. If we do do that, if you guys, a lot of you do say that we should do that, 
Do you are you going to tune into the videos? Are we going to get the same amount of views? I don't know. Comment below and let me know. It's Ron Vesky and we in the Bettini and the roof off like Houdini.